Hey, my name is Jake. I have a little encouragement for you. Just a super quick one, but I have a disclaimer first. I'm just an ordinary guy that's wildly in love with Jesus. I'm no expert on anything. But that said, I do want to share something with you that has got me uh, like super pumped. Uh, it's in Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. It says, What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He didn't even spare his own son, but offered him up for us all. How will he not also, with him, grant us everything? Now sometimes we need to just look at things a little bit differently to get a whole new fresh perspective on it. We all know John 3.16, right? We, I mean, we can almost say it in our sleep. For God so loved the world that he gave his only forgotten son, not forgotten, begotten, begotten son, uh, that whoever believes in him will not perish, have everlasting life. We've heard it since we were kids. And don't get me wrong, it kind of loses, not its magic, but we get used to it. We get, we make it normal. We get so complacent with that verse. This brings a new, fresh perspective to that verse. Because it says, if God's for us, in all the world, and all the your your mortgages, your taxes, your debt, your job, everything that's going on, your people against you. Uh, if God is for you, who can be against you? Who is anyone to God? And I love this part. He did not even spare his own son. He loves us that much. So, the like last week when I asked you, what's the two things that you would die for? Everybody said, well, faith and family. Same thing here, but God gave his son to be killed for me and for you. That's huge. Now, as a parent, I can't even fathom those kind of things. That just blows my mind. Uh, and to lay my life down, really lay my life down for somebody, for a murderer, for all these you know, crazy people in the world, and normal people like you and me who have normal sins, whatever, uh... I want to also share this verse with you uh, to kind of bring us in a, in a round circle. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, He made the one, that's Jesus, who did not know sin, remember he was perfect, to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And we phrase it and we versed it all of our lives that Jesus bore our sins, which is true. But here it, it says it for what it is. He became sin. He became my college years, my things that I did yesterday, my things that I did today. He became those sins, those things that I don't even tell anybody about. He became those so that I could be, hello, the righteousness of God in Him. Does that sink in at all? That gets me pumped because... God gives me, not just saying that I'm not guilty. He says that I'm innocent, that I'm righteous because of Jesus becoming my sin. So if nobody's told you all week long or even all day long, all month long, that you're not loved, you are. God loves you to death. My name's Jake, and I appreciate you listening. Thanks.